Welcome to today's 3D print. Today is a very preliminary analysis of the Two Trees Bluer. I had quite a lot of issues. I don't know if it's because I got an early model or a batch issue or what. I am hoping a lot of these problems are not making it into production. So we shall see, but I'm going to give you guys a rundown anyway. So stay tuned. Okay, Two Trees Bluer. It's a machine I want to like so bad, but it's got so many problems and I don't know exactly why. First, I have a major firmware issue. Um, it's printing everything backwards and I cannot correct it in the slicer. The only way I can correct it in the slicer is to mirror the parts. And um, well, first of all, the um, y-axis was backwards. The parts print facing backwards, even though in the slicer they're facing forward. That's easy to fix, you just flip Y. But flipping X does not fix the mirroring issue with prints. The prints print backwards. Um, and I, on my particular print, I can't mirror it in the slicer because then I lose my origin alignment because it's a multi-part print. So I can't do that yet. For a single piece print, you could just mirror it and you'll be fine. Um, but I don't think anybody else has reported that problem, so I think I just got some goofy firmware. Not sure why, I'm waiting for a reply from them on that. Um, a couple of minor issues. The plate on the bottom, I would like to see an extra set of bolts in the middle. Right now it's just the four corners. Um, it bows in the middle, so it sticks down a little bit. I'd like to see two screws to hold that middle up. Um, they actually sent me a magnetic flex plate. They make magnetic flex plates, but they sent me the wrong one. They sent me the 221. I asked for that um, because they have this very beautiful print surface they made, which I already gouged. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. But um, they have this very beautiful print surface they made for the printer, and I did not want to permanently attach that to the printer. But luck would have it, I had a wham-bam print surface. So this has got wham-bam on it. Which means I don't have to wreck that really nice custom skin they made for this printer, which I'm very happy about. Um, hot end has the same problem as the Sapphire Pro. The fans, CFM is too low. Insufficient cooling. I get some nasty warping. Um, I get a little tiny bit of skipping on the feeder, and I'm not entirely sure why it shouldn't. The feeder looks quite nice. I did find out that this was too tight. I loosened that up and I got better spring tension because it actually has a pretty strong spring on there. So if you're having a slipping issue, loosen this bolt right here a little bit. Because what happens is if this is too tight, when you squeeze this to admit filament, it does not reset back where it's supposed to because this is too tight. Loosen that and that'll fix that problem because they have a nice strong spring on there. Um, alignment of the mechanical parts was excellent, no problem, except for this piece. This piece, um, it's a bent aluminum bracket that bolts into the printer and bolts into the frame, which makes for an extremely strong, rigid connection. Excellent design choice. At first I thought a little weird, but once I put it together, and the same thing over here with the built-in stepper motor mount, incredibly, incredibly strong structure. I like this a lot. But this piece here was bowed out a little bit. So what happened is you'd get a bolt in on this side, and then the hole wouldn't line up on the other side. So I had to bend it straighter to make that work. I would like to see them correct this a little bit. So this outer bracket needs to be bent in a little bit more to capture this better, so this can't dance around inside here. Um, not a big deal, it does not appear to affect print quality at all, but that is something I would like to see this get put together a little bit better, um, because you can't remove this. This is captured once they have the capture nut in, which you can see right there. Um, so this is not removable. You can take the pulley out, you can take the bolt and the pulley out, but you can't remove this actual U bracket inside of here. Um, nice design for tensioning. Be careful, don't over tighten. People have a tendency to over tighten the pulleys and you don't need to. Um, I would like to see this change to a tooth pulley instead of a smooth pulley since it is a belt drive inside of here. The filament bracket, too small. As you can see, filament rolls don't fit, not all of them. So the that part right there needs to be deeper so it can handle these larger rolls. You also have tensioning up front here. All you need to do is to tighten or loosen this screw, which will draw this in or out. Tightening up your belt here. Excellent design choice there. I like that. Took me a second to figure it out. This is your 
um, Z height limit switch contact point. So your limit switch contacts here. I would like to see an improvement on these switches. These little plates, these little paddle plate here that it uses to activate, um, they come off very easily. I'd like to see uh, a slightly higher quality one where this does not come off as easily. Not a huge deal, but it is an issue. I like the fact that both of these come right to here, which is nice. This is not mentioned in the instructions at all. That's going to be a sticking point for this printer. The instructions are not good. So I'm going to see if they wish for me to work with them to correct those instructions because they really need a lot of help in the instructions department. The hardware is nice, but it's got just a couple minor issues. Now, this also has a problem. Behind this screw is the um, screw for the hammer mutt to attach this to the machine. Not a good design. Um, what you need to do is to move this bracket this unit here, okay, increase the size of the metal right here a little bit so that you can move this a couple millimeters to the right. I want this switch, that point right there, to be directly in the middle of this frame right there. Reason is, this needs to be a double wide, okay? It needs to be a double wide with two hammer nuts, okay? Or even one hammer nut would work fine, but it needs to be a double wide so that this can be over here so that it doesn't block the bolt that you have to tighten or loosen in order to move this. Because you have no idea where to put this until you you got to tighten this down to get it into a usable position. And then you figure out this is too high or too low. Well, now you have to loosen this all the way in order to gain access to the nut behind here to move this. So I would like to see that offset. Okay, and the easiest way to do that is to make this bracket a little bit bigger and move this just to the right, like five millimeters, so that you can get a wrench to the bolt in there, okay? And that means this also has to be moved about five millimeters to the right. So a slight reshaping of this bracket, move this to the right, and you're good. Now, if it costs a lot to redesign this entire bracket, there is another way you can do it. You can make just this bracket wide enough to reach this rail here, have the hammer nut on this side, and then this over here. The problem is you're going to add a lot of torque doing that. Not a whole lot. I mean, it is just pressing a micro switch, so it should be okay. So make this bracket wide enough to encompass this rail slot as well. Leave this here where it is, which means you don't have to change any of this, and simply have the nut and the hammer nut over here in this slot. This way the two don't interfere with each other. And it'll make it very easy to put this into its roughly correct position and move it up and down to get it close. Touchscreen UI, same as the Sapphire Pro, excellent. I have no complaints about it except for the same two complaints with the Sapphire Pro. I would like to see the print list under printing be a file list instead of a set of icons. And um, that will make it a lot easier to read the longer file names. And I would also like to see flow rate added to options while printing. You have fan speed and whatnot there and print speed. Um, feed rate, but you don't have flow rate to adjust the flow rate on the fly. That would be very, very handy, especially when doing vase prints. Now, on to the big problem. Um, besides the firmware being a pretty big problem. Sorry about that, I had to sneeze. Um, the big problem. No eccentric nuts. They depended on their engineering quality control to put this together and for the most part they did an okay job these tri-wheel assemblies are virtually perfect spot on this one slides up and down under gravity this one does not slide up and down it's a little bit too tight but not tight enough to cause a bump 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 a flattening of the bearing so that's okay this one however is too tight and it's and you can't really loosen it i was able to loosen it a tiny bit by um loosening these nuts which would introduce a tiny bit of play and then retightening and I got a little bit looser but without an eccentric I cannot loosen this too tight carriage the bed on the other hand is wobbly and that's a big problem and I can't adjust it because there are no eccentrics the bed absolutely has to have eccentric nuts you have to assemble this at the factory. This has to be designed and assembled to perfection in order for you to have this bed without eccentrics. The back two wheels are perfect. The front two wheels are loose. And I cannot fix that. Well, I can. 
I'm going to eccentricize the hole that that nut goes through so that I can move that wheel a little bit closer then tighten it up and hope it holds especially because I would have to remove this entire bed in order to do that because these rails um, are not tall enough so I can't get a wrench underneath the nut um, so that's going to be tricky the back one you can do because you can push it off of the you can push it off the edge of the bed can you do that with the front yes you can so I might be able to nope can't reach it and you can't reach that one either because you can reach these but not these and these are what I have to loosen as you can see I can't get a wrench in there to mess with this so that's going to be very very difficult to do what I might try to do is to well, see the problem is I can't get a wrench in there I was thinking I could loosen these um, hook a strap between the two to pull them closer together and then retighten them and hope it holds its position the problem is I can't get a wrench onto the allen head that's on the underside here because of this I'd have to remove this entire assembly from the printer from the inside I'm assuming there are bolts holding these two rails on by the way this double rail fantastic that's the way it should be done nice wide stance which will keep the bed very very stable assuming it's not loose like that um because what will happen is as the pulley pulls this back and forth this is going to move up and down as the pulley applies tension in the back and forth direction and you're never going to get consistent prints on that it's going to be random um, now, let's talk about the good things. The head is fantastic. I love the dual fans. I love how quiet this head is. These fans are silent. I had to stick something in here just to see if the hot end was actually going. But I think all three of them, the CFM is a little too low. So you got to bump up the CFM a little bit, um, two trees. You need more power here. Power supply fan is still noisy, but that's something you can replace. It's a 60 by 10 millimeter fan. Usually it's 12 volts. Double check that with a meter first. Uh, sometimes it's 24. Uh, I like the occlusion of the metal feeder. I would like to see you guys start moving toward um, Bontech style dual gear feeders. They're just better for these machines. Your PTFE tube was improperly cut from the factory. If an end user had attempted to install this PTFE tube, they would have had a very bad experience. The explanation is very simple. Let me show you. Here is your PTFE tube, which slides through your hot end and touches your nozzle. I left a gap here on purpose so you can see what I'm talking about. This is your brass nozzle and this is your PTFE tube. The lined hot end that these printers use, which I prefer mind you because it's very very user friendly, it's very user simple as long as it's assembled properly. So what happened is this needs to mate directly against this. If there is a gap here filament is going to cook off in this gap and you will eventually jam and not be able to print. Your tube was cut at an angle like this. Now this is exaggerated of course, but there was an angle, which means you are never going to get a mate with a nozzle. That's very, very, very bad. On top of that, to properly assemble this, you need to loosen this two full turns. Slide your PTFE tube in, lift this to lock in place, and then finish tightening this, this two full turns. That will force the PTFE tube against the nozzle and compress it just slightly to guarantee you do not have a gap here because if you have a gap there you're in trouble the slight skipping i hear every now and then just once in a while might be the result of the hot end heat creeping on the edge meaning this fan might not be quite enough to keep it cool several things you can do you can try opening this up more to allow better airflow through the fan these this opening is going to restrict airflow make them bigger make this opening bigger make these openings these slots larger so you get better airflow through the fan the one in the center doesn't matter that's where the fan center is it's these rings here make them thicker so you get better airflow that might be enough to take care of that the instructions need a whole lot of help um, this printer is a $200 printer which means this printer is going to be built by beginners. Which means the labeling of the bags is even more critical. <laughs> you don't have to do the fancy, you know, full color, you know, Sapphire Pro labels like you did on the Sapphire Pro. Just a simple white sticker that says this is 20 times 5 by 10 or 5 by 8 or 5 by 25 or 4 by 15 or whatever size the bolts are. And then reference those exact sizes that are on those labels in the instructions. Your instructions, for example, for installing this, reference to three bolt sizes. 
the instructions themselves said the correct bolt size, two and two for here, while the actual drawing showed a completely different bolt size that's wrong for this size and another completely different bolt size that's wrong for this side. <laughs> so the directions need a lot of work. The directions also don't address assembling this, don't address correcting this, they don't address wire management, they don't address running the wires, they don't tell you what holes to run the wires through. Um, figuring out where the wires go on the motherboard is a little bit difficult, that needs to be clarified. You need to use, not translations, of where the ports are on the motherboard, but the actual names that are silk screened onto the motherboards. And then also, whatever name you call these components, use that name in the instructions. Um, this is not referenced in the instructions that it needs to be. Um, I can't even really use the printer right now because of the firmware issue. The hardware is okay, except for this. The hardware overall is okay, but the, with the firmware issue, I can't really use it. Um, I'm assuming that is unique to mine, that I just got a weird unit that had bad firmware on it, because as far as I know, nobody else is having that problem. Uh, otherwise, in general, some of the good things, the assemblies are beautiful. Uh, thank you very much for finally putting an x-axis rail on a printer correctly. The bolts go through from this side. They are not threaded onto the aluminum. They are threaded onto this aluminum, but this aluminum has a steel press-in insert, and that's what you are threading the steel bolt onto a steel insert, which means you can tighten these down well and not have an issue. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And then you just use two hammer nuts over here, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, either which way, on both sides, you are going to steel to steel, so you do not have an issue with stripping those bolts. And they are the heavy-duty crown bolts, which I prefer. Uh, there's nothing more hated than these stinking little mushroom bolts, which always strip out so badly. These are 50-50. I've already stripped one of them on the printer. Um, but these almost never strip. These are good. And you should use hardened steel whenever possible. But otherwise, excellent, excellent, excellent assembly here. I love the hot end assembly. I love the way that works. Just needs a little more oomph for the fan unit. Um, you need some sort of retention for this. Something to hold it. You also need to talk about wire management. For example, the way I actually have to go back into the bottom and shift my wires around. Because right now they're not long enough for this to go all the way up. And that should be mentioned in the instructions to check that. Um, beyond that, not too many issues. The design is actually very good. The hardware is actually excellent. Um, fix the spool holder so it's wider. A little more CFM on the fans here. Um, in, if, adjust this bracket so that you can adjust the hammer nut at the same time as this is in its proper position to be used. Slightly better quality switches because this here, the flapper here, popped off on me three times already. Really annoying because if you lose that, you're done. You got to order another switch. Um, the bed is fantastic. It's absolutely flat. Um, although I, because this is too tight, I have one of these wheels that's a center size. So this is moving up and down slightly when I print. And you can see it because it's along this axis where it's too close to the bed right here. And then three inches to the right, it does the same thing. Well, guess what the circumference of this wheel is? Three inches. Which means one of these wheels is too tight or it's lopsided, it's, it's center sized. So this head is being forced to move up and down. Again, an eccentric nut might alleviate that problem. Because I suspect it's because this is too tight. This The wheel arrangement is too tight on here. This is a little bit too tight, but within spec, this one is perfect. This one's too tight, and this one's too loose. And because of the lack of eccentric nuts, I can't fix that. I love the clean finish. I love all the aluminum anodized parts. I love the fact that you have flex plates available from the factory and that you'd include this sticker not already attached. So your users can buy this printer and buy the flex plate from you as well. 235 by 235, make sure you get the right one. Um, the 220 by 220 is for the Sapphire S. The 235 by 235 is for the Sapphire Pro and the bluer. I love your tensioning, although I think it's not needed. Um, this one's a good idea to have. It's out of sight, out of mind. I would go back to doing a regular tensioner. 
or just make sure your instructions instruct people not to over tighten because people tend to think oh tighter is better and then they mess things up so don't over tighten but otherwise not bad just needs a little bit of QC control there um, your brackets are wonderful they're nice and very strong you also need to include instructions on adjusting the filament sensor my filament sensor was misaligned with the feeder so when I pushed filament in I could not get it into the feeder I had to actually grab this filament sensor and shift it so that it would line up with the hole in the feeder unit and allow filament to pass through otherwise the pass through was fine I didn't have any problems with that um, overall in general mechanically the hardware is beautiful it just needs a couple of tweaks it mainly eccentric wheels um, unless your machining is really really up there unless your tolerances are really really up there and unless your parts are very very high quality meaning it wouldn't be a $200 machine it's going to be very difficult to make a consistent batch of machines without eccentrics add the eccentrics include instructions for how to adjust them anybody who wants to know how to adjust eccentrics it's very easy loosen it until it wobbles then tighten it only exactly enough to stop the wobble then stop that's it you're done that's all you have to do with an arrangement like this where you have two wheels and two wheels the way you do it is you look at the wheel and you can actually see the wheel let me get focus here you can actually see the wheel move up and down see it move up and down okay see that wheel move up and down you just keep tightening it a tiny bit at a time a little smidge until that stops and when that stops and you can't move it up and down stop tightening then you come back here and you check the back one lift it up and down you see i have no play on the back one it doesn't move at all but this front one moves you can see it there moving okay that's how you check tightness for these for these it's very simple you just tighten the bottom eccentric until this is uh, loosen it until this wobbles and then you slowly tighten it until this stops wobbling the moment it stops wobbling you stop tightening that's it um i will hope i'm really really hoping i will have an update for you guys on this soon when they provide me with fixes on how to um well, mainly the firmware. Um, the, the mechanical issues, I'm hoping that is not endemic to their entire run of machines. I'm hoping that is, I got an early model maybe, because I've had this for like two months. So I'm hoping I just got an early model and they fixed most of that. Otherwise, my only major issue is the firmware and then I'll be able to put this machine into operation. More to come later. If you have any questions down below, go ahead and ask me. I'm pretty confident Two Trees will fix this. Their work on the Sapphire S and the Sapphire Pro are excellent. And their responsiveness to feedback has so far been excellent. So I am hopeful that this will get fixed because it is quite a looker. It's just a damn nice machine for 200 bucks. So that's it. If you have any questions, ask away. I will see you guys later.